when we wrote the report, there are parts where we talk about, look who's not present here. So when I think about the origins of the eyes of Texas, or our football team being all white until 1969, or the band playing in minstrel shows, it's demeaning. It says so many things about the status and the roles of African Americans at that time as perceived by white people, right? It is part of the story, irrevocably. The University of Texas was, to put it bluntly, a Jim Crow university in a Jim Crow state. Anything that emerged from that background could be said to have racist origins. One thing about songs is that in a certain way, they're new every time somebody sings it. It's not like a building. A song is performed. And with each generation that performs the song, the song means something to them. It might be entirely different, independent from what it meant at the very beginning. In 1905, when President Prather uh, dies, John Lang Sinclair and Lewis Johnson are asked to sing the song at his funeral. Both of them kind of had this moment where they're like, oh my gosh, this is not the school joke we did at a minstrel show, this is a hymn. One thing that's interesting to me about the Eyes of Texas is that it never sort of stayed static. It evolved, it changed. It wasn't a song that the Board of Regents hired a, a songwriter to uh, write an official anthem for the University of Texas at Austin. You know, it really is from the roots up. It's from, <laughs> You know, it started with the students and it evolved over time, but it was not handed down. It, it's not a proclaimed, you know, official song. Finding out about the uses of the song by other institutions, other schools, in media, uh, as a protest song, as a song of um, loyalty, all those different pieces, I think, made me think, this means a lot to people. The two most serious uses of the song for protest reasons was when James Ferguson, Governor Ferguson, uh, vetoed the university's entire uh, budget because it wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't fire some of the faculty and administrators who had opposed his reelection in uh, 1916. A band of co-eds marched past the governor's office window no air conditioning in those days, so it was wide open, and he was standing there. And they sang the Eyes of Texas at him. And then when Homer Rainey was dismissed by the Board of Regents in 1944 as the University of Texas president, largely for racist reasons, the regents were afraid that he was going to push for uh, racial desegregation of the campus. The students went down to the Capitol and, uh, again, sang the Eyes of Texas as a protest song uh, to the legislature and to the regents. Those uh, activities were nearly 30 years apart. These are two different generations of students. Obviously, the students felt that that song had a use. Our colleagues in the um, history department found a poster. It says, women, the eyes of Texas are upon you. Have you paid your poll tax? A poll tax is a method of disenfranchisement for African Americans and for women. Students use that to sort of exhort people in power to do the right thing. This song has a past. The past tracks the past of this university. The university is what it is today, in large part because of its past. And there are aspects of the past that don't make us proud. There are aspects of the past that should make us proud. One of the moments that is probably most impactful for me is Barbara Smith Conrad in the 2000 commencement singing the eyes of Texas. Understand Barbara Smith Conrad's story that experience of being one of the first black students here and having the opportunity to be in the opera taken from her because of people in the state legislature who felt that she should not perform uh, opposite a white man. Having her come back in 2000 and singing that song is so incredibly powerful to me, what this can mean. To quote Barbara, this is my state, this is mine as well. I'm claiming this because I put in the work, I contributed, I am a part of this community. Is a way to remind everyone as we play the song uh, that it is an opportunity to reflect critically on the history of our institution, and not only our institution, but certainly the history of this state and this country. The context has changed dramatically in the last century. And the, the future of the eyes of Texas, in the way that it's performed and used, can be an example for us about how we this institution is holding itself accountable. And in so doing, recognizing the kind of power dynamics that have existed here, you know, that should serve as an example for other entities where those sorts of uh, sorted traditions or cultural norms might exist. And so 
The United States is a work in progress. The state of Texas is a work in progress. It's still a work in progress. And in that context, I would say that the song The Eyes of Texas is a work in progress as well. There's so many facets of how The Eyes of Texas is performed and played and, and received and heard that, uh, you know, the setting, the context is everything. The way that it is performed now, the context in which it's used is often about invoking a sense of community, pride, pageantry, and affinity for the university. The thing that's really exciting is that this school song, this um, part of our historical record, goes throughout the history of the University of Texas. It starts almost at the university's inception, and it goes to the present day. So you can tell a story about the University of Texas through the story of the song.